Hello everyone, this is Lori from Grammy's Keepsakes, and we're on the next collage with me part, and I have done a prototype. I made my own CD envelope. This is a regular one that you can purchase, and I, this is just an example of a little notebook that goes inside that'll fit but let's make our own or you can use a ready-made one if you have and what I did to get the window is I used this snowflakes number three Sissix Biggs die and I have this great big snowflake And then I can keep the extra for something else. But what I used was a misprint. And instead of throwing it away, I made a CD envelope out of it. And the back is a misprint also. And then I made a large tag and I backed it with some of my dyed paper and I put a dyed lace topper and stitched all the way around it. So let me show you how I made my own. I used this wafer die and this is another misprint and I just cut that out of the center. So rather than wasting it, we're going to use it. And I have a piece of mylar that I've cut. And this was the large envelope so I could make it quite a bit bigger. And this one is the small. So I'm going to make it smaller. And I was playing with folding it to see how I liked it because inside this one is going to be the little notebook that is one of the two of the journaling cards. And I just put four pieces of paper that are dyed inside. And then I stitched it with a three hole pamphlet stitch and put little hearts on the ends. So this is go inside. So in order for me to get that owl in the middle, that's how I determined where I want that bottom fold. And so I cut my mylar the size that I want my CD envelope. So now we're gonna go ahead and flip it to the back. Oh, but before I do, I went around and inked with the, um, broken china ink so that I've got a little bit of an edge. So now I'm going to take this card or mylar and I'm going to use this score tape and just apply it along the edge of all four sides. And I am going close to the edge but not over. And I'm going to burnish that down with my bone folder. And then I'm going to use my pokey tool and remove the paper backing. And with my fold as my guide, and my other fold, I'm just going to go ahead and lay that down and press it. 
and I used mylar cardstock that I have. You can use packaging or uh, vellum. You can use tracing paper. You can use anything you'd like, or you can even use a window out of a window mailing envelope that from your junk mail that you get in the mailbox. And so now I'm going to go ahead and fold on the other side along that mylar also. Open it up and fold on the bottom and along the top. Okay, now what I want to do is I measure here from the top fold to the opening and I've got about 5 eighths of an inch. So I want to trim this to half an inch. So I'm going to just trim it off. And let's see. So that'll be five and a quarter. So that's going to go right over the edge. And this side is a little big. So I'm going to go ahead and just trim some of that off. About a half inch or so. Not particular. And then this side on the bottom. Let's go ahead and trim some of this off also. Now I have it much more manageable. And what I want to do is go ahead and with my scissors and clip at an angle through the corner folds. And that's going to reduce the bulk. And I'm going to go ahead and fold it. This is going to be the front of my CD envelope. And I want to measure to cut my back. So I want my back 4 inches wide by 4 and 3 quarters. And I've got this misprint here. So I'm going to go ahead and use this corner of it. Say I could use this, but I don't really see it accidentally fed through and printed. I had the fox and then it went and printed the bird over the top of it. And because I put it in the wrong way in my printer. So I don't really want the bird larger than the fox and sitting on top of them. That's why I don't want that in my center. But I can still use it or we can use something on this side. But I think on this side, well, that would work, wouldn't it? It needs to be something that's appealing. That will work. I'm gonna go ahead and cut four inches. That way I can use the top part for another project if I need another piece of print for collaging or anything. And then we're going to go ahead and trim this. I double check, measure twice, cut once, four and three quarters. So here's our new piece, and that's going to go in here. 
So what I'm going to do is go ahead and open this up. Now this one was the one that we're going to put on the top. I'm going to go ahead and glue that down with Fabri-Tac because it's going to stick over the top of this mylar. And I do want to be careful not to get too much because mylar is not porous and it will ooze out the glue. So now we're going to double check that I got this right. And let's go ahead and fold over our edges and glue it down. For the window of your envelope, you can use a punch too if you'd like. The sky is the limit. Use whatever you have. And I'm going to glue this down to a page so I don't care what the back of this looks like. If you're going to make this free floating, you can cover it again if you'd like. But now we've got this great pocket. And here is our little book that I already made that's going to go inside. So now I have the snowflake for one of the signatures and this one with the snowy owl for the other signature. Now let's go ahead and get our signature pages together and then we can start putting our ephemera in so that we know what else we need to make. So I've just been collecting a bunch of papers so here I have four double-sided prints I want to determine which one I want for my center. I love them all. Let's use this one for the center. So I'm just folding it in half and giving it a crease. And that'll be my center. And now, which one do I want on the outside? I like this one. And fold this in half. And I have already trimmed off the white margin with my laser printer, it does not print borderless, so I printed it and then I trimmed it out. So this is going to be the anchor to my signature. And here I've got some of my dyed paper, a couple of different kinds, and I did some stenciling. And this is red cabbage dyed paper, and I've got some copy dyed paper. This one is a legal size so it's big. And then here I've got some more of the tea dyed paper. So let's just go ahead and fold up a few sheets.
so we get a nice mixture. Here's my center. Okay, so have to determine what I like best next to my bird. Try one of these. I like that. We'll put that next to the bird. And then we'll use some of that. And let's use some of that. And here's the one with the flap. This one again, this one. I have no idea how many pages I've got so far. Put that pretty one in. Let's count them up, see where we are. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I have some more. See if I have something bluer. Let's fold it this way. And I may change my mind yet. Yeah, I like that one better than this one. Okay, I've got 10 in there right now. So let's go ahead and build the other signature and go from there because we still have some more, two more digital pages that can go in this first signature. So here I've got this half and I need to find my center. This is going to be my center. So I need my outside on this one. I love this with the red. I really like this one a lot too. I like them all, that's the trouble. Well, I guess it's not really trouble, is it? But let's see if we can make them all fit. We want it to coordinate Okay, so we have a match here. That's might not be not what I want. This is better. Yes, because it's different. Okay, so this is going to be our 
anchor page. So now I need something that's going to coordinate with the front here. Wow, doesn't that look like it's a match? This um, red cabbage dyed paper is just beautiful. I'm almost out though. So I've only got these four pages. So I've got to use them carefully. So let's go ahead and put some coffee dyed in here. We have another one with that. Let's flip it over so it goes into the back though. And I'm going to use coffee dyed here because that's going to bring out the brown in here. And let me count my pages. And my anchor page is going to be smaller than my other eight and a half by 11s because I cut around the border, but that's okay. It can be smaller. It doesn't matter. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, we've got 10 in the first and 11 in the second. Or it can be the other way around. It doesn't matter. So let's figure out how we can get 12 in here. I've got another green one. I've got another print. See what's fun to use the prints is for more ephemera if we want. Here's a <laughs> look at bu bushy-tailed squirrel and look at all those rabbits. It's kind of cute. I think I want some more coffee dyed paper. Let me grab some of that. We're going to have quite a collection of colors. This is going to be a fun winter journal. Now where should we put it? Right here. Split those up. Yes. Now I have 12 pages in this one. And I'm going to go ahead and just clip that so it can help train my folds. It's going to be pretty fluffy. And let's go through and check this one. Let's get some more pages in it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes. So let's get another digi in there. And we've got this fun one. Oh, I love it. See, I love this. Let's do this. Maybe. That works, doesn't it? We have our coffee dyed to accentuate this. 
and this to go with that. I like that with it too though. By adding the, these two right here, I've got my 12, don't I? Yep. This is what we'll do. So now I've still got two digis that I absolutely love that we're going to find a use for them somewhere. So now I'm going to put my extras aside. Don't want them too far away in case we need them. But let's have some fun. Here's our goodies. And I've made two more journaling cards too with dyed Windex cards, lace, and then some of the cutouts. And here is our journal cover. So now, which one do we want in the front? Oh, I love them both. And it doesn't matter which one's in the front, does it? Because we haven't done anything yet except get our pages together. I love that pop of red. stick our ties inside so they don't mix us up anywhere. And we can move those. I just stuck them there. I'll probably change my mind a few times because that's what I do. Okay, so we've got two different library pocket type pockets, and we've got our two different CD envelopes with tags, two more journaling cards, and then we have a whole pile of ephemera that we've cut out from the kit. And I've got some lace that I want to use. And then I made some more little journaling cards too. And how I did this process is I have this embossing folder and I applied the walnut stain ink on the raised portion of the little reindeer and snowflakes and then I dabbed lines of the blue the broken china and then I put in some cardstock and ran it through the embossing machine and I have a um, what's it called cut and boss and it runs a A4 size paper or an embossing folders through it so I can use these nice wide folders. And there's also some fun little ones that you can use on a regular 
like Big Shot or whatever you have, that you can do the same thing. Just apply ink on one side, put your paper in, mist it with water, close it up and run it through. So here is our wintry bling. And got lots of stuff in my little box yet of fun things that we get to use. There's pockets already made. Lorna thought of everything. There's another couple. And this is the other one. See, I had the misprint and then I have I still have one good one. So let's start with those. And let's figure out what we want to do. And I haven't played with this yet, so I'm not sure what I want to do. Because I was thinking that these, let me find a, something I can use for a tag. That's kind of big. So this can be a belly band. Have to find the right spot for it. And if I'm going to have some belly bands, I might want to stitch. That's why I'm checking those out. And instead of gluing, I'm just going to paper clip so that I get an idea in case I want to move them. Because this will make a fun pocket page. I think it would get lost on this. Too much going on there. We'll just admire the beautiful artwork. But here's an idea. So we'll just put a paper clip to see if we if I change my mind or not. 
and I like these for writing and so that you can do what you would like to the journal also because it's going to be put up in my Etsy shop so I would like whoever the new owner is to be able to to do what they would like with the journal also oh I love that page this would be beautiful with that and there's the owl it works with this beautiful background So let's stick a big paper clip on that one in case we're going to go with it. And we still have this also. And that looks nice on that. Have I got, I've got all my pockets on the left side, don't I? Well, yep, every one of them is on the left side. Okay, and I've got one in the front. And it looks like I've already got two in the back half. So maybe here, kind of like it on that. So this is what we'll do. We'll flip it over because it's not stitched in yet. My thought process on how I put the pockets and goodies in my journals is like very random but this is what I do I just try it on for size and see what works We got one back here and one here. And I want two in my in the back half. And it looks like let's try it on here. No. I like it better here. I'm sliding all over the place. I put the mat, the little working mat down so that I would cut down on the glare. I like that. So let me grab a big clip. And we'll attach that. And now let's. Oh, I have another pocket. 
Well, we'll figure that out later. Okay. And it's the owl. The owl goes in the front half, or in this signature. So I've got one. I have five. So let's play with this one. And this one with all these cuts on the snowflake. And I have the mylar. I did not glue down the little bits very thoroughly because I didn't know where I'd need the glue. And this one wants to come up, so I want to dab a bit of glue on that. Crafting in my house with, in real time. It's kind of scary, but that's, that's how I work. I like that on this. It complements it. Or I'm going to try something. Let's hold this the other way Going back. I think I'm going to put this on this one. this pocket up as well.
And then if we put a tag in, we would have secret journaling room. This might be an idea. Might change my mind. And I still have two more. for this back half. I'm going to go ahead and put that here. This would be pretty put that there across from that. That would be nice. And it hides up some of that hot mess going on. Oh, I think I found a, here's a perfect spot for that. That blends in the browns and coordinates and hides some of the craziness. I like that. Let's put a big clip on that one. I really like that drawing, but we need a place to put this and the little ends might get caught on the lace on this side, so I'm going to think about this one, probably change my mind. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to do some stitching. I'm going to find a place in the front half for this last pocket and figure out another place to put another one of the belly bands. And then we'll be back to place some more next time. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support.